Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video we're going to be talking about the cytoskeleton. Now as you know, your body has a skeleton and the skeleton is the part of your body that enables it uh, to have structure and support and keeps your body in the right shape. And just like your body has a skeleton, the cell has a, has a skeleton too and it's called the cytoskeleton. It's made of different proteins that perform the exact same function as your body skeleton in that it uh, provides support and structure to a cell and keeps it in the right shape. Now there are three different types of proteins that are generally involved in the cytoskeleton. The first is a microtubule. Now a microtubule is made up of a protein called tubulin which is these little brown or uh, little orange-ish yellow uh, spheres and they're just little uh, sphere blob-shaped uh, proteins that all link together into a big tube when they uh, as a polymer. Now the important thing about a microtubule is that it resists compression. So if you stretch it, it'll just come apart easily. But if you try and squeeze it down, push it down, compress it, it'll resist that uh, that pressure, and that's where that's a microtubule's purpose. It's also the widest of the three uh, types of cytoskeleton um, proteins. The second one is a microfilament which is made up of a protein called actin which is com uh, completely different from tubulin and it's uh, instead of being compression resistant it's tension bearing which means if you try and push it together it'll just kind of flop around but if you pull it it'll come tight and it'll resist that. Now um, it can be compared to kind of like a rope. Um, you can see in this picture the different uh, actin proteins are all woven together, they're twisted together, and it bears that tension. Um, between the working of microfilaments and microtubules, one preventing the cell from being pulled outward, one preventing the cell from being pushed inward, that's what enables the cell to keep its shape for the most part. Microfilaments are also the thinnest of the three um, of the three types of proteins. The last one is an intermediate filament, uh, which you may be thinking, we've already got the the compression, we've already got the tension, what else could we need? And we're, we're going to uh, get into that with the intermediate filaments and why we actually have them. But uh, kind of a brief overview, they're made of keratin, which is the same stuff uh, in your hair, in your nails, um, in like claws and stuff of different animals, but uh, so it's keratin and uh, it's tension bearing just like microfilaments. It's got a width kind of in the middle of the two, of the other two, so it's uh, they're wider than microfilaments but uh, thinner than microtubules and like I was saying earlier they've got a distinct purpose in that they're more permanent than microfilaments and so because of this as the cell grows, it'll start with microfilaments and then start replacing it with intermediate filaments made out of keratin and actually uh, it can be certain other fibers. If you look at this picture, um, it's got kind of a different structure than uh, microfilaments though. Keratin is actually a uh, one big long protein. It's like a strand of protein. It's a fiber almost. Um, and they take all these keratins and they wrap them to and it's wrapped together to form the intermediate filament. And so that's worth noticing. It's not actually just the little um, spheres from the microfilaments. Now there are a couple organelles that uh, particularly rely on and are involved with the cytoskeleton. The first is a, is centrioles, uh, and together they make up what's called a centrosome. When you have both of them, these two are two centrioles, and they're always kind of arranged in this perpendicular pattern. Um, their purpose is that they organize the microtubules. That's all that we've really been able to figure out in biology as far as centrioles go, uh, but that's what they do. They organize the microtubules. They're called a microtubule organizing center even. Structurally, there are nine groups of uh, microtubules, so like nine triplets you can see in this picture, and they're bound together by these blue proteins. Um, and so that's how they're put together. Overall, they're roughly spherical or roughly um, cylindrical. So that's kind of supposed to be a circle. 
Uh, and the interesting thing about centrioles is that they're not actually necessary to a cell. There have been experiments performed that show that that when a centriole or when both of the centrioles are removed from a cell, the cell can actually perform all of its functions, including those that involve the microtubules. So there's still investigation going on, still more research, um, but centrioles are involved in the microtubules. Now, here's where we're going to get into most of our um, kind of in-depth stuff. Uh, you've probably heard of a flagella. A flagella is kind of like um, a tail on a cell that enables it to move around a little bit. Uh, if you've ever seen a picture of a of human sperm, it's got the head and then it's got the big long flagella and it's involved in motility and cell movement. There's also another type of uh, similar organelle called a, it's called a um, cilia and the difference is that uh, flagella move back and forth like a fish's tail while cilia will move uh, just like forward and then back like uh, a rowboat's oar. So they're actually identical in, in structure and in function, just how they perform is a little different. So we're just going to refer to them as flagella in order to keep things simple. Now the base of a flagella, what's called the uh, basal body of the flagella, is very similar to a centriole. Uh, it's that same uh, nine sets of triplets of those tubules, and so it's identical to centriol. And uh, but once once you start going further up on the flagella, it changes the structure uh, to where it has nine pairs of microtubules, and then two in the middle. There's not a picture. Um, let me bring you back to this. So again, this is like the the basal body of the flagella, and up for the rest of the length is just two here instead of one and then two microtubules right here in the middle. Now, the interesting thing about, or the important thing to know about flagella is how they work, how they move. This is the important part, this little diagram, and these motor proteins, which are, like, you can almost imagine, like uh, stick person legs, they pull the, the microtubules up and down relative to each other. So, you can see as these, if these, um, if these different motor proteins start to walk down, this tubule will move up relative to this tubule. Um, and then there are also other proteins that aren't shown that will hold them in place, and instead of that way, instead of sliding past each other, they'll start to curve. And if you kind of visualize that. That's all of how a flagella moves and how a cilia moves also. If you remember, there are nine whole sets of these, and there's motor proteins in between each set of, uh, of microtubules. And because they all move in an organized fashion, that's what enables the flagella to just kind of wave back and forth in order to push the, um, the fluids out of the way and to make the cell move. And so that's uh, really it for flagella. Uh, the, and the cytoskeleton is as simple as that.